Hey everybody, it's Eric here on the LearnMax, and uh, today, yep, it's the big day. We are finally going to have the much-anticipated poly episode, where we're going to go from our simple monophonic synth to this. Full-on polyphonic synth. Uh, it's not that big of a jump, but we're going to cover a bunch of things, so you're going to have to pay attention uh, closely, and you can always watch the video again if you miss something. I'm going to try to go relatively slowly. Okay. Now, you'll see our synth interface down here should look pretty familiar. It's moved around just a little bit. I've, I've kind of tweaked a couple of things, um, but nothing really major. I'm going to open it up now. Hopefully, I'll open it up now. There we go. And uh, you see the patcher window, and I'm in presentation mode right now. You'll see I have two B patchers showing for my uh, ADSR controls. Now I'm going to go over to patching mode. Okay, things look relatively familiar now. You guys should still see you got the, your uh, ADSR controls here, and they're in B patcher uh, windows right now. And then I've got my other controls, my low pass uh, choice, my frequency, my resonance, my filters. Everything else should look fairly familiar. I've done a little bit of uh, neatening up here using, you can click on a, uh, a patch cord, and you can choose, uh, let's see, where is it now? Uh, arrange, route, al uh, align, and then route patch cords, it will uh, automatically kind of uh, give you these kind of segmented uh, patch cords that you can then kind of adjust a little bit if you want. It makes things look a little bit nicer. So you'll notice in here now there's none of the actual uh, MSP functions that make the sound for the most part. Those, those are kind of vanished. I have them sitting inside of what looks sort of like a patcher or a sub patcher, but it's actually this poly uh, object here. And the poly object is really, really important. It's a very, very powerful object. It's the one that basically provides polyphony. It creates a number of instances of the patchers that are inside of it. So like in the case of a eight or 16 voice synth, it'll give you 16 instances of your cycles and your AD, your, the, the uh, meat of your ADSRs and your filters and all that. Everything that's inside of there is, uh, is instantiated a certain number of times. I, I said this one is 16. Now that requires a, a little bit of uh, uh, preparation in that you'll notice my MIDI, MIDI in has changed a little bit too now. Because what Poly will do, it'll actually keep track of note ins and, uh, yeah, the note ins in terms of the note on and note off, and it will send the correct one. It'll keep track and make sure the note on and note off goes to the same instance that uh, turned on the note. And it'll also send new ones to other instances. So every time you have a MIDI note on and off, if you just play them kind of a monophonic line, it'll keep sending it to the same one. But if you hold the note down and add more notes, it'll automatically route them to new instances of your uh, polysynth, which is really, really cool. The one thing you have to do is you kind of prepare your uh, MIDI information a little bit uh, in a little bit fancy here. Uh, what I do is I have still a MIDI in message. I use this MIDI parse, which divides uh, my MIDI messages up into note ons and all the other ones, note on, uh, poly pressure, or everything else. I'm just interested in note ons right now. And that gets a list, which is the pitch and velocity of the note. And what I need to do for the poly object is I need to prepend the MIDI note uh, onto that message. So it's gonna say MIDI note, then note on and velocity, and then it's gonna know what to do. Now, let me open this poly object up, and it opened up over here. You'll see lots of familiar stuff. Uh, it, uh, let's see, it's got our ADSR, our uh, SVF, our, you know, our filter, our balancer here, our oscillators. Everything's just as we normally uh, have kind of known uh, it to be, but you'll notice also there's these unpack objects unpack, 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 and these in objects. So instead of normal inlets, I use these kind of special versions of the ins, uh, which are for polyphony objects. And you'll notice also my outs, instead of outlets, I have out, and this one's a little out tilde, meaning there's an audio signal. Ins are just uh, without the tilde, meaning they're just straight uh, max uh, signals. So everything else, the MTOF, the divide by 127, all that other stuff is pretty much just the same as it was. But you'll notice there's one additional object here, this this poly object, and that's an important one. That basically is a way to tell Max yet this instance is busy. So I have to send it a signal that is one or, or non-zero as long as this voice is busy. So I use the ADSR, my, my uh, uh, amplitude envelope, 
to kind of send that that message. I use this uh, uh, the mute uh, outlet on my ADSR as well as the ADSR itself, and I send it to this poly, which just basically says, "Okay, you're busy. You know, don't uh, don't do anything or or don't reuse this voice while it's busy." So that's what the this poly tilde object is about. Okay, and I use the unpacks just so I have a, a lot fewer inputs to this. I've kind of grouped things into these messages. So you'll see unpack 000, zero dot or zero point and the zero, zero, zero point, zero point. It'll take a list and divide it up into its individual elements. So like here I get a filter message, you'll see in the other one, and that the first four arguments are for the ADSR, and then the next one is for the type of filter, and the next one is the, the frequency of the filter, and the next one is the resonance of the filter. So the unpack and the in here is just a way so that I can send one, uh, one message in, and it actually does a bunch of things. It helps me be organized, unpack. There's a pack and an unpack object, you'll see. So we've seen stuff inside the poly patcher here. And then outside, you see these P filter message, P amplitude message, P os message. Let me open one of those up for you. Okay, and uh, basically what this is doing is uh, it's creating a, uh, you know, once again, kind of a shorthand way. We're going to go in here, zoom up a little bit. Uh, it's a shorthand way to take all the values that are coming in and turn them into a single message. So it's using the pack function, which is the opposite of the unpack. But I also have this thing in here called Bondo. And what Bondo does is it's a way to have a whole bunch of uh, messages or outputs all get triggered at the same time. Okay, So no matter what happens on the inlets here, on the input side, all of the outputs get uh, triggered. That's uh, really useful when, like things like I have an envelope where I might be changing a certain value, whether I'm changing the, you know, the uh, the release or the sustain. I want to make sure all those values get sent. A lot of the max objects, it's only the excuse me, the leftmost inlet that really kind of triggers an event to happen. So sometimes you want to have, you know, no matter what inlet it comes in, it triggers all the outlets. So that's what I'm doing here with the Bondo event. So anything happens, it sends out a message or it sends out all the messages. It packs it up and then sends it out. And I also have a, a bang or a button here. So whenever a message comes out of the pack, I get a bang and I send this target zero message. The target zero message is another important message for the poly object. That basically tells the poly object the message I'm about to send is for this particular target this particular target voice. Like in this one, I have 16 target voices. By sending it target zero, it means send this to message to all the voices. So no matter what I do, what I change in my interface, that gets sent to all of the voices, right? If I change the sustain, I want all the voices to get that message. You know, that, that that's the new value you should all use from here on out. So that's why I have that. And if you look inside my OSC message, which uh, uh, is in charge of uh, sending the oscillator, bundling up the oscillator uh, messages, has the same type of thing. It has a little bondo with only three outputs, uh, a pack, which package things up, you know, again, oscillator one type, oscillator two type, and then the balance between the two. And then it bangs out a target zero just to make sure that that gets updated. So here I have it. Okay, let's see. Here, this sets up my oscillator message, sends it to the uh, poly object. This sets up my amplitude message, sends it to my poly object. This sets up my filter message, yeah, and sends that to my poly object. So that's, I have those three inlets, those three messages that uh, really kind of make my life a lot easier. And then I have the special inlet here, which uh, sends my MIDI messages in. And then it comes out, I get just a normal audio signal out, and I run it through this little gain stage here just so I can kind of push the uh, uh, the value up a little bit. I scaled things back in my voice uh, just because I, I didn't want to kind of overdrive things. I actually scaled them back quite a bit. I'm like a quarter here. And that just keeps me from clipping and things. You can adjust that to taste. It's going to kind of depend on on how you build your synth. So that's the bulk of it. I think I've, I've got it covered. Let's see. We went into our interface. We went to everything. We went to B patchers and so on. We did it in about 10 minutes, kind of covered the whole thing. Still lots and lots of uh, features we can add to this thing. Uh, I've had some re uh, requests for things like Glide and Portamento. We can add other filter types. We can add you know LFOs to modulate things. We're going to get into all that kind of stuff. But just wanted to take some time. This is, you know like I said, about 10 minutes this time around. Poly, super, super important object. Thanks for coming to Learn Max. I'm Eric, and until next time, hope you're inspired. Happy patching.